see, man. So we are we are live. Hey, let me ask you real quick. Um, do you mind if I change the screen to a whiteboard so that I, I can fine. kind of make yep. some notes and stuff? Yep, as, that's fine. Yep. As we go through, because I know that there's a uh, some agents out there they don't own an ink pen when it comes to making notes, and um, I want to make sure that they um they get as much value out of it as possible. So so hey guys. This is Jason Morris here, and I'm on the phone with Craig Cody. Craig is a certified public accountant, certified tax coach, um, and business owner, and former New York police officer. Man, you've got all kind of uh, all kind of experience, Craig. Yeah, it's been a fun ride. It sounds sounds like it. Well, most of most of the agents that are in real estate, well, the people that are in real estate agents that really work, all of them are real estate agents, and you know. Being a being an accountant, you probably have dealt with our profession before and um, realized that we wait to the last minute on literally everything, <laughs> and, uh, and we prepare as little as possible. So uh, I tell you what, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, what a tax coach actually does. And, sure. Okay, uh, I'm a I'm a CPA, a certified public accountant. I'm also a certified tax coach. I'm a business owner, and as you said, I was a, a former New York City police lieutenant. Um, I've actually uh, retired about almost 18 years ago. Um, in addition to being a CPA for the past seven, uh, 15 years, I've um, been a certified tax coach for the last six years. And um, what a certified tax coach does is there's probably about 100 of us throughout the country, and we do a lot of training on tax planning, which is basically... Um, looking for legal ways for clients to keep more of what they make. Um, I've co-authored an Amazon bestseller, Secrets of a Tax-Free Life, and my most recent book is The 10 Most Expensive Tax Mistakes uh, That Cost Business Owners Thousands. Yeah, and that, that book is actually, I put the link on, on here on Facebook, but that book is actually free on your, or that report's free on your website, right? Correct. If you, if you go to, we're going to give you a, a landing page, which is basically uh, – Craig Cody and company.com uh, forward slash uh, Jason Morris. And there'll be a link to link there. Um, Craig Cody. Actually, I've got it. I've got it in the description. This on sure. the Facebook live. So Craig, you know, if, if we wanted to hire a tax coach, so your job is you actually go out here and you, you help us come up with a tax strategy. So being a real estate agent um, or being a per self-employed profession what do you feel like the biggest what should i be doing like as an agent let's say i'm making let's do 50 to seventy five thousand dollars a year what should i be doing with my taxes should i have a tax structure like an llc or c corp or anything well um there's been some <clears throat> recent case law that made some changes to the old uh, adage where you know real estate professionals would create an S corporation and they pay the, the income to the S corporation and thereby save some self-employment tax. There was a recent court case that kind of basically invalidated that, um, that way to do it. So what basically agents should be doing that most of them are not doing is planning, taking some time to figure out, okay, what can I do legally? That's going to save me some taxes. What, what should we be doing legally? Should, should we even worry about having a corporation? Uh, it, it, depending on the amount of money ma you're making, it may or may not make sense. That, that's kind of an individual um, yeah. type of decision. But what, sh what should you be doing? You should be communicating with your CPA. All right. Yeah. Um, most, unfortunately, most CPAs are more reactive than proactive. They're looking in the rearview mirror instead of looking forward. Um, they're putting the right numbers in the right boxes, but they're not being proactive. So you want to communicate with somebody and you want somebody that's going to basically be proactive for you, help you look for ways to save you money. Um, so most accountants, you know, tax planning is, okay, we'll talk to you in December, see how much money you made, what's your tax bill going to be. This is, you need to make this payment by January 15th. Yeah. Um, that's being reactive. We like to meet with our clients throughout the year and uh, do a tax plan. And basically what the tax plan is, it's a, it's a layout that tells you, okay, you need to do A, B, C, and D. And by doing A, B, C, and D, you're going to save X amount of money a year in taxes because these are legal deductions that you're not taking. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. So like, and I've had that problem in the past before where I've, I've done a lot of, I do a lot of stuff in the real estate business. I, 
I sell real estate, I coach agents, I write books. I've, I've got a lot of income coming from a lot of different places. And um, sometimes it, it gets confusing. Honestly, my tax situation is a little complicated um, or, or even seems complicated to me, you know, sometimes. But then, uh, fortunately, I've had a lot of write offs. So that threshold to where, like, hey, I should go out and do an LLC, do you think it's, is it at 100,000? I got an accountant before tell me like 50,000, but I don't feel like 50,000 is a lot nowadays. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like if you're an agent making only 50,000 a year, then you probably need to like reevaluate your goals and stuff. Right. Well, I mean, if you're forming an <laughs> LLC, you're basically doing it for liability purposes. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not an attorney, I'm not sure. And that's a state by state issue. How yeah. much liability protection it actually gives you. Um, so I'm not sure where an LLC is going to, you know, help you out. Um, but the old adage was, you know, you'd have a, an agent making, you know, well north of a hundred thousand dollars and they'd have a corporation and they'd take a salary and they'd save some self-employment tax. But like I said, there's been a recent court case that's kind of, you know, changed that so whole situation. So, but what can, what can agents do? What can agents do? Okay. Yeah. Agents, um, that are, making money can they can have what we call a medical expense reimbursement plan and what that does is it lets that agent let's just say they have a child that's going to be getting braces if they do it correctly they could actually write off the cost of those braces really uh, another thing we see is you know with older clients where maybe they're having a little cosmetic dentistry done you know you could now write off the cost of that you know that medical work where typically it is deductible, but it has to exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income. So it's deductible, but you get no benefit of it. Whereas yeah. when you have a medical expense reimbursement plan, and if you do it correctly, now all of a sudden it becomes deductible and you do get, you do get a benefit from that. Really? So a medical expense reimbursement plan, is that like a health savings plan? Nope. It's, it's totally different. Um, it's easy to um, implement and maintain. Um, and it's typically, we see it a lot with clients that are sole proprietors, um, single member LLCs, uh, no employees. It's something that works for them. Really? What, what do you think about, um, what do you think about uh, like self-directed IRAs? And I think there's the, um, there's the well, the self-directed lets you put $5,000 a year. Tax six, to, yeah, six or uh, 65 6, is it this year. Um, um, but yeah, we have a, a lot of clients that are using self-directed IRAs. They're using it, you know, and they're, they're basically funding real estate deals in it, um, or they're loaning it out, and they're they're basically taking a mortgage on some some maybe they're dealing with a flipper, yeah. so they're loaning them fifty thousand dollars at ten percent, and it might be a six or a nine month short term loan, and that's how they're using their their self-directed IRAs. What, what about the um? There's another IRA. Gosh, I can't. It's slipping my mind right now. That I was thinking about it that I was actually I was talking to Equity Trust Company about the other day and um it's um is it a SEP IRA? Well there's a SEP IRA, there's uh you know 401ks, you know, they're what they call solo 401ks. There's a whole host of different things, but you could you know you could pretty much make them work the same way as a self-directed, depending on who your custodian is. So you may have to work with a specific custodian, but you could get that deduction and still go ahead and you know, use that money for your real estate investments, et cetera. Is, is there one type of those plans that you recommend? Like, like I'll tell you for my situation, we got, I know we got people on here watching and stuff, but um, for my situation, like honestly, like six grand, being able to offset the taxes on $6,000 for self-directed IRA or 6,500. I mean, that's fantastic because it's $6,000, but honestly, $6,000, like in 2017, be honest with you, man, it ain't going to help me a lot. Is there another retirement plan well, you'd recommend? For a 401k, <laughs> if you, you could do up to $52,000 if you're doing it right. But like I said, these things just take a little bit of planning. Yes, sir. So 52 versus six, right? Um, oh, yeah. See, like 52, that'd make a big yeah, difference in, right. and, in what I'm going to pay in taxes. And 6,000 isn't going to make that much of a difference, you yeah. know? Um, and it also, it, it also depends on how much money you're making, you know, that makes the, whether it's worthwhile to do or not. Yeah. So now, how should I be, you know, you're a certified tax coach. How should I be looking? How should I be handling things with, with my C, CPA or how should agents be handling things with their CPA? They, they should be communicating with their CPA. How often do you think is like a reasonable time to 
to meet with them? Should we be meeting once a month, once a quarter? Well, you know, we like to meet and we typically do our meetings via Zoom or WebEx with our clients on, on a monthly basis. You know, maybe on a real estate uh, agent, you might be able to go once a quarter, but you should be definitely communicating. Yes, sir. Right? On a regular basis. So, you know, the doctor doesn't call you up and say, how are you feeling? <coughs> Yeah, you need to call right. him and make an appointment. So it's the same thing. You need to communicate with your CPA and he needs to communicate back. Yeah. What if, what if you don't have a CPA that's com that uh, you're communicating with? Like, like I'll tell you, like right now in, in my business, I've been kind of looking around for a CPA that really understood the real estate business and understood my business, you know, and um, some of them I've talked to, I just didn't feel like I understood the real estate industry or didn't understand, you know, like, Hey, I've, I've got these properties over there. They cost me a lot of money sometimes. You know, there's a lot of expenses that go into them. What should we be doing to find that CPA? Uh, you should be asking them questions. You know, it comes back down to communicating. You know, you know, what do you know about real estate? Do you have clients in the real estate field? What kind of experience do you have in the real estate field? You know, sure. uh, do you have investor clients? Do you just deal with real estate agents? Um, you know, are you, you know, aware of how a cost segregation study works, stuff like that. And, you know, and I tell clients, you know, when was the last time your CPA came to you with an idea to save money? Oh gosh, you know? I've never if, had one call. Okay. Me. So maybe it's time money. to say next and look for somebody else. <laughs> yeah. I've never had one say, Hey Jason, look, um, I think we can save you money. Usually it's been honestly with the CPAs I've had, it's been me going to them going, Hey man, um, I've got all these expenses. I read online that I could take these off my taxes. Is that true? <laughs> you know, I've had that. I've had that conversation with CPAs in the past. <laughs> well, well, Craig, let me, I, I got I got a handful of questions for you. Um, you know, I find that real estate agents, like a lot of them, that when they talk to me about their tax situation or something, or when they uh, when they mention their taxes, it's usually that they are behind in taxes. Right. Right. You know. Uh what should they be doing in that case? I mean, what, I mean, their CPA isn't helping them or they don't really have a CPA and they're panicking because, Hey, they, they didn't pay in last year and now they owe $25,000 or whatever. What should they be doing? Well, like what can a yeah. tax planner help them do in that situation? Well, uh, a tax planner can help you going forward. We do a lot of work, uh, you know, and in the real estate agent field, there's a lot of work in the, what we call the tax resolution side of it. Whereas yeah, they owe 20, 25, 30 or fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Their income is kind of sporadic. So they did no planning. They owe all this money. Now they're getting notices from the IRS or they expect to get notices. You know, what can they do? So we do work with those clients to get them straightened out. Yeah. So somebody that does what we in the business we call uh, tax resolution work. Yeah. What if they haven't filed for several years? I've talked to agents in that situation too. You know, we get 1099 at the end of the year and sometimes, it, you know, there's agents they have place in their pile of junk that's on their desk and, you know, six months later they haven't filed. They haven't filed an extension. They haven't done anything. Right. Right. So they need to get, you know, you need to get compliant, which means you need to be caught up. Yeah. Um, so typically we'll, We'll get a, an agent come to us that they either owe a lot of money or they haven't, they've made a lot of money the last couple of years, but they haven't filed because they haven't had the money to pay the taxes. So we'll get them caught up and then we'll get them set up on some kind of a payment plan. Um, or sometimes, you know, they'll need to make an offer and compromise that is, you know, where you're able to actually pay the government less money than you actually owe. That doesn't happen too often because uh, if you're making money, it's typically not something that works. Yeah. Do, do you see yeah, I mean, a lot of agents, you know, we're in a profession that's kind of funky, you know, it's like feast or famine for a lot of us, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> either we're um, we're rolling high and buying new cars and fancy watches and stuff, or either we're, you know, like rolling pennies to pay the light bill, you know? Right. With the offer and compromise, do you see, do you see the IRS accepting significantly less or, or? Uh, it just depends on what you got, I guess. It, it really depends on what you got, you know. And so it's, so it's like a hardship situation, right? And and we tend to not work with the clients that are in a hardship, you know, situation because we're working with business owners and you know people that are are making money. So they're typically not in a hardship situation. They just need to dig themselves out of the hole. Yeah, I understand. There's there's a lot of that where I see where um agents need to just dig themselves out of the hole and they just can't really get seem to get ahead. 
Um, do you recommend though in our profession, do you recommend buying real estate as a something that we can depreciate and, you know, having our tax plan or that part of our tax plan appreciate an expense? That sort uh, of stuff? It really depends on what you want to do. You know, obviously real estate professionals, are typically more inclined to purchase real estate because that's what they do for a living. Yeah. Um, but sometimes people, they don't understand the way, um, you know, it works. Do the, are they actually allowed to take um, the deductions that bring them down to zero? And do they get the benefit of those that bring them down below zero? So um, there's a lot of um, misconceptions out there sometimes where they think, well, you know, I, I'm doing this and I'm, I have this big loss, but am I getting the benefit of it? Yeah, because not all losses you can completely deduct, can you? Correct. <clears throat> what do you think is the um, what do you think's the biggest deduction that we should be taking that most agents are missing? Oh, I would say the medical expense reimbursement plan is one of them. Okay, another one would be um, not taking a home office deduction. Yeah. Uh, um, if you work out of well, your home I, and you have a home office, I then, had an account at one time. Um, advised me not to do it because he told me that it could uh, possibly trigger an audit. I've heard that once or twice myself. Uh, the IRS came out a couple of years ago with some guidance from what they call um, like a standard that you can use, a safe harbor. But yeah. here's the bottom line is if, if you have a room in your house that you're using exclusively as your home office and you could document it, why not take it? I agree right. with you. I agree then, with you. That also opens up a whole host of other things that you're legally allowed to do. You can have an, then have an on-premise athletic facility, which could be your home gym or it could be your pool. You can take a home gym off your off if, your tax. If, if you have a, a bona fide home office, yes. No kidding. So you could do a home gym too and a, a swimming pool? Correct. No kidding. Nobody's ever told me that. Yeah. What, what about like – H, like I pay an HOA fee, and as part of that, I get access to a swimming pool and stuff like that. Can Would that count for me? No, no, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. So it has to be like my swimming pool in my back. Correct, correct. Man, that's amazing. Like like I know a lot of us know all the – like the easy ones. Like like one of them – one of the easy ones I find is um, mileage. I mean I put an insane amount of – um. I put an insane amount of miles on a car a year. I mean, I probably put, I, I wouldn't be surprised, man, if I go back and look, I probably put 35,000 miles on a car this year driving. It's like, I'm always in the car driving somewhere. And that seems to be like the big one everybody knows about um, is, is the mileage deduction. But I didn't know that there was the medical expenses. I didn't know you know, the home office I've done before. For, fortunately, I've never been audited, at least not before this. At least not before this. Uh, this podcast. <laughs> you know, um, what what are some red flags though that they see that um that uh or that you see agents doing that you're like, oh man, they shouldn't be doing that. That's bad. Well, well you need to document everything you do. If you're not documenting it, you know, um, you're going to have a problem. Because eventually you're going to get a notice or you're going to get a, you know, an audit or something and you're not going to be pr able to prove it. So what's the sense of doing it if you can't sleep well at night? That's right. So we need to document all expenses. Yep. It doesn't matter what it is. We need to document it. You know, I, I'd be willing to bet though most agents out there, they don't have like, they never do like a check. They never do like a balance sheet and they never actually go through and they don't have anything set up like QuickBooks where they can, you know, join it with their checking account and, actually see everything that's real expenses. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's partially correct. You know, it's, it's, it's gotta be run like a business. And if you run the business, you should have a profit and loss. You should have a balance sheet. You should have all the things that you're supposed to have. Yeah. And then we should have, we should be documenting. I, I got a question here. Um, an agent asked, what about, what about new tires on a car? Can you deduct new tires and oil changes? Well, it, it, it depends on if you're taking the mileage rate. No, because the mileage rate encompasses everything. If you're not taking the mileage rate, yep, up, and let's just say you use the, the card 90% for business, so you get to take 90% of the tires and 90% of the oil change. But oh, you man. need to document the usage. You need to document the usage. What if you have a car that's really only used for business purposes? Then you could use 100%. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. You, you still need to track your miles because if the IRS comes uh, looking – they're going to ask you for your log, and there's a number of apps out there that you could use these days. Yeah. 
I've got all kind of, I could just sit here and ask you questions over and over. I, I get it. I see a lot of agents though, in these groups asking about leasing a car versus buying a car. Is there any real advantage to the lease? Well, a, a lease, typically you get to a bigger deduction up front than you would if you purchase a vehicle, unless it's a big SUV. The problem with a real estate agent that's doing 35,000 miles a year on a lease is if the lease is only for 15,000 miles a year. Oh, it'd be insane. Exactly. So yeah. it's something you have to be aware of. So let's say I wanted to lease lease a little bit nicer car because I'm, I'm in the process right now. I keep looking at cars. I got car fever crack. Um, and that's, that's the truth. I keep looking at them and going, oh, man, I don't want a payment or I don't want this or that. But and one of the things I've thought about in my mind is like I feel like I got to go out there and buy, right, because of the mileage. But I don't really want to get rid of my old car I got. I, I got a Jeep Cherokee. I don't really want to get rid of it. You know, it's, it's comfortable. It doesn't look bad. It's just getting a lot of miles on it and stuff. But buying a new car doesn't give me like a bigger mileage deduction. But – if I go out there and decide that I wanted to lease a car to drive, you know, just, just say for important things like meeting clients and stuff, you know, my old Jeep, I can drive that, put out my signs and do all my little running around errands and things like that. Would there, there would be a, so there would actually be an advantage to that lease. Well, it could be, depends on the usage, how much, you know, are you using only 10% for business because you're only using it sparingly. Yeah. Or, you know, so then you'd only get 10% of that lease as a deduction. Okay. That, that actually makes a lot of sense. So you, I'd have to prorate it the same way as mileage. I wouldn't get to take it all off. Correct. What about office supplies, things like that, things that I'm buying, you know, a new laptop, things like that? That should all be deducted or depreciated, yes. Okay. And um, well, I, I tell you, Craig, I appreciate you answering some questions for us. I know there's a lot of things that agents have and stuff. What, um, so if somebody wanted to hire a tax coach, what's involved with that? Well, typically what we do is um, we have a, a short phone call because we have clients all over the country. Then we'll have a client will send us their um, last year or last two years worth of business tax returns and personal tax returns. We'll do an analysis, then we'll set up a call and we'll take about 20 minutes and go through the analysis and see if it makes sense. If there's the ROI for them is worthwhile to do a tax plan. Yeah. And typically, so do they need do they need a tax coach and a CPA or can they just hire you and you do it all? Well, we, we, we are CPAs and tax coaches, so we do it all. Yes, sir. So you guys do it all. So you guys, I, I would, if I wanted to hire you, I'd send you all my stuff. You guys would evaluate it, see what the ROI is, and you guys would come up with a tax plan for me. And then we would basically, we'd talk on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on what my needs are. And how much would something cost like that to do a tax plan? It, it, it honestly, it varies, <laughs> but the, the typical plan is somewhere between uh, 3,500 and 8,500. And the typical ROI first year is over 400%. Wow. So you guys could actually come up with a plan because, you know, I know a lot of agents, a lot of agents are on that edge, Craig, where they're, they're, you know, they're out there selling real estate and they see these guys flipping property, right? And, you know, of course, we watch HDTV like crazy. <laughs> so, so, you know, and we think that, you know, some of this stuff is real that we see on there. But we're watching all this stuff and we're going, man, you know, like if I could just be like, uh, you know, what's his name on Flip This House? You know, or I'm so close. I'm representing clients and they're making money doing this. We have so many. There's so many agents that are on the edge where they want to make that jump into flipping property and they want to make the jump into rental property because they're seeing their clients do it. You know what I mean? So, so they, they should probably call you and talk to you and figure out all the benefits or, or maybe there's not any benefits for them to do that right now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it all starts with the tax plan and we see whether it makes sense for them to, you know, they need if, we to could, plan. if we could provide some value. They need to decide whether what they need as far as retirement accounts. I think that medical expense reimbursement plan, man, I, I got to get some more information on that because I, um, I have not, I have not really been concerned with medical expenses. I mean, I'm pretty healthy. I don't really go, you know, I don't really ever have to go to the doctor, you know, I mean, uh, and you know, Hey, I, I just haven't really worried about that, but I guess if I do, you know, if I needed something, I guess more major, more expensive, you know, uh, you know, knee surgery or something random like that, that would actually be like a really good thing for me. Correct. Correct. Or, or if you needed, 
you know, braces or if you needed some cosmetic dentistry. Yeah. Yep. Or, if my or if my child needed braces. That Exactly. Yeah. Man, so Craig, I tell you, like, um, I want to ask you, what other advice would you give agents right now, especially brand new agents just starting? Like a brand, basically they're brand new business owners. Don't spend more than you're making and <laughs> take, take a chunk of what every check and put it aside for taxes. That's, that's awesome, man. What, what do you think is a safe amount? Like I've heard 20%, I've heard 35%. What do you think is a safe amount to put in there? I, I, I would say depending on if you're just starting out and you're putting away, you know, 25%, that that's a good safe number. And hopefully you have some money left over at the end of the, uh, at the end of the year. So consider year. it like a forced savings. That's fantastic, man. Well, I really appreciate you doing this call with me today. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you and talk about this tax plan, how would they contact you, Craig? They would contact me. Uh, my email is Craig at ccodycpa.com. And our office number is, I'll let you write that up there. Let's see, Craig at ccody. CPA. CPA. Dot com. Dot com. And the office number is 516. Five one six eight six nine eight six nine four zero five one four zero five one. And you've got a you've got a book too. I'd like for you to tell them real quick again about your the book the actual two books so I can write it out here. Sure, it's um, Secrets of a Tax Free Life. Secrets of a Tax Free Life. That's on Amazon. And the second is the uh, Ten Most Expensive Tax Mistakes. that cost business owners thousands. And that is the one that is on your website, is it? Correct. Awesome, man. Well, I, re I really appreciate it, man. If I can help you do anything, Craig, just give me a call. Let me know. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much. Take care. Oh, you too. Bye-bye.